You can't munch just one on Striker's Perspective. Get the kids inside, it's time to play Retro Arcade Games. Bet you never thought you'd hear those words. This is <laughs> Striker Avenio. This is uh, Striker's Perspective, where we talk about uh, topics related to the video game world and what's going on in them. This time we are covering the Dreamcade Replay. That's right, this is everything you need to know about the Dreamcade Replay before it releases. I'm going to cover my initial negatives I had with the system when it first showed up on Kickstarter, and I will address each one. So, if you got some of your own reservations about this thing, you know, the Retro Engine Sigma had some problems, is this uh, basically the exact same thing happening all over again? I'm going to cover some of that stuff, and then we're going to see what features the Dreamcade Replay comes with, and then we will compare the specs directly to a Raspberry Pi 3, and take a look at the processor that will be used in the Dreamcade itself. At this point, the Kickstarter has been successful and the backers are awaiting shipment of the console. But there will be another round of pre-orders taken before they release their product for a full retail price next year in 2018. So that's why this video exists. You will get a chance to maybe do a pre-order uh, while they're just before they're going to ship their promised consoles to the backers of the Kickstarter. So please note, this is not a review of the system. It has not been released yet, and I have not even played on the beta console. I am not endorsing the product, but I have backed it. <clears throat> I'm backer uh, 935. It's a pretty big deal. Uh, I, I don't feel like I should officially recommend a product on a Kickstarter page that may change significantly by the time it releases. I know they promise to deliver what you, know, you see, but you never know what's going to happen, right? So, this video is just to give you some background information on the product, let you see some of the concerns that I originally had, and give you an idea of the dedication that Dream Arcades, the one producing the product, have toward this product, but ultimately the decision to make any kind of purchase should be left up to you. Before we get to the main topic, we need to wrap up some old business. I always take a couple of minutes to comment on a previous video, so let's get to that right now. So, we need to talk about the uh, video that I did for the Retro Engine Sigma. Uh, on Striker's Perspective, I did an episode based on it. I said it showed promise, and I backed it. I even said this in the comments. People were like, hey, let us know when it comes out. But back then, I didn't even know what you could do with the Raspberry Pi. Others in the comments section said that the hardware was based on an Orange Pi Lite, but I didn't know what that was either. Some said they were just using free programs, that they weren't making anything on their own, but I didn't understand. I started looking up prices for a Pi 3. I found guys on eBay were selling packages for $100. Uh, I did some research, and I ended up regretting backing the project. Then when the Retro Engine Sigma came out, everything became much more clear that this wasn't the thing uh, that we initially thought it was going to be. I should make a special note that the people over at RetroPie, the people that work on Emulation Station, and the guys that work with Retro Orange Pie had nothing to do with this console. Uh, Diodo, the company making the Retro Engine Sigma, uh, simply took all of these programs, they put it on their platform, and they never asked permission, nor informed these companies, apparently, that they were using their software, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, they also used another piece of uh, free software without permission called Ambien, which is an all-in-one program for running games on the Amiga platforms. They never let that guy know that they were using his stuff. So what's wrong with that, you might say? Uh, seriously, I want to get into the main console itself here pretty fast. So let's just say it's kind of underhanded, the fact that they're taking the free programs and they're using it and making money off of it. People did not really like that. Then the Dreamcade Replay showed up on Kickstarter. I liked it, but I didn't want to waste another $100 on another mini console or mini PC that promised but never really delivered. So this time I did some research. I looked into the company, compared the specs, and I really think this product is different. The Dreamcade Replay is a universal flashback console that will run nearly every console emulator from the 1970s through the 1990s for the most part. 
More details on that later. So if you've been following retro gaming for a little while, then you've probably heard about a Raspberry Pi and how you can buy one, add a bunch of emulators and ROMs, add a controller, and you're all set for nearly endless hours of gaming. But what's it like when you actually buy one? What's the kind of setup you need? How much money are you going to spend in that? How does it compare to something like the Dreamcade Replay? Well, let's take a look at that. You can get a Raspberry Pi 3 board for $35 US. Holy crap, it's so cheap! But hold on, little Timmy, that's not all you need. Well, I suppose a few things wouldn't You be... still need a micro USB power supply, a case, maybe a couple of heat sinks if you plan on overclocking it. What's overclock? HDMI cable, 32 gig micro SD card, class 10, of course. Of course. GPIO to breadboard interface board, ribbon cable. But I just want to play Nintendo! Large breadboard, jumper wires, push button switches. Oh, I'm screwed! Indeed! Okay, so you don't need all of that unless you want to add some frills to the overall package, but at a minimum, you will need a power supply, a case, micro SD card, and a cable or two. You will find several companies completely willing to sell you a starter kit of some kind that will have most of what you need for around 60 to 80 US dollars, depending on what components you want. Seriously, though, $70 US is probably the average cost of a standard uh, Raspberry Pi 3 kit you don't already have some of the hardware I mentioned, like a HDMI cable or a micro SD card, then it might be down to about 50 bucks for you if you have some of that. You can piece everything out and try to save some money, but shipping costs might add up, so you probably are better off with a kit, uh, even a $50 one at the most. Then you need to put it all together. So from the moment you open up the box to having a functional internet connected computer may take you about 20 minutes. That's if you kind of know what you're doing. It might be closer to 40 if this is going to be kind of all new to you. At times you will be you will need to be willing to do some research on your own after you've completed the base installation. Now there's plenty of community support at raspberrypi.org. Uh, it's a treasure trove of information to help you out. If you've ever built a PC before, then you should be just fine. But what if you're not? I mean, some people work hard nearly all day long. They get tired, and when they get home, they're sore. If they get a new gaming machine in the mail, they don't want to spend 30 to 40 minutes learning a new process for the first time. They just want to play a game or two without too much hassle. Some people love tinkering with components, adding LED lights and power switches to their custom case, but if you just want something you can plug in and play, for the most part, with very little standing in your way before you can play a game, then you might want to try the Dreamcade Replay. So the Kickstarter has officially ended, so those early bird prices are gone, so let's not even talk about them. The good news is that for $120 US, I still think this product is a good value. I don't know what their costs will end up being, uh, but if you add up a few known values, like the processor and whatnot, the case, that's, you know, their own making, um, and estimate a few others, their cost per unit must be damn close to $90 to $95. Dream Arcades could easily be asking for $150 for their unit without a controller at retail, but they actually have it for $120. So let's take a look at that. That's the Replay BYOC. That's the bring your own controller one. Uh, pretty much any USB controller is going to plug in and work, uh, along with a lot of ones that support Bluetooth. Then they got the Replay DX for $160. That includes... Uh, one modern day controller with twin sticks and it's probably going to be wireless as well. Then they got the Replay DX2 which has two controllers, uh, a modern one and a more retro one for $200. Now the controllers you see may be pictured. They're not going to be the final ones quite yet, but seriously, they're a couple of good quality controllers. If they are using the one from, uh, what is it, 8-bit Doe? That's like a $42, $43 controller at retail for U.S. So, you know, you're getting like a good $10 off that controller if you get one of the bigger packages. So keep that in mind. And here we go. Here's my reservation. So I had a few reservations about the way this product was originally handled. I'm going to go through these quickly and then address each one that looked like a red flag to me. So here we go. Number one, the original Kickstarter Dreamcade Replay. Dream Arcade's first Kickstarter was a little bit of a mess, and it ended up falling short of its goal. It actually featured three separate products, 
and backers were meant to donate toward the specific item they wanted. Looking at it, it seemed like you're getting all three items, and this aspect confused some people. All three products were part of the Dreamcade Replay family, but it had additional names as well. The Dreamcade Replay Arcade Edition was $400. The Dreamcade Replay Mobile, the portable cabinet, was $600. And the Dreamcade Replay Classic, uh, the little mini console, was $290. I heard several say that $290 US was way too much for what was essentially a mini PC designed to run retro games. If a Raspberry Pi 3 kit, which I just told you, on average, it was like around $70. If that could emulate nearly everything aside from Nintendo 64 and PlayStation at full speed, then why does this cost so much? I do admit, this one really worried me, but at that time, they had a 24-gig uh, hard drive, which meant, they, which meant they would have needed to license Windows 10 on every box. Uh, they must have discovered later that you can get a free version of Windows 10 Home if the internal memory is 32 gigs or less. It's possible they had a more expensive processor at the time, but I can't confirm this or anything else that may have made the price so high originally. But the fact is, they realized that the mini console on its own had to come down in price, so they made enough changes to get the cost on their end very close to $100. And the early backers, they're basically getting the system at cost, as far as I understand. So... That's actually a pretty good deal. During the Drew Talks interview, Michael Ware, whose official title is Head Geek at Dream Arcades, and one of the co-founders, he admitted that the first Kickstarter was over-ambitious and a little confusing to backers. Number two, the Retro Reload Searchable ROM engine. Many didn't understand how this supposed engine that searches and finds the ROMs for you was legal. Uh, and many thought that this whole project was going to get canceled because it was finding illegal ROMs for you on the platform, and apparently that's just not supposed to happen. So I heard there was another product that tried this, but supposedly you can't have a program on your platform that finds illegal game files. Someone else stated that they better not have these ROMs stored on their own server and that it's going there to find the games. That's apparently illegal as well. It's been explained now, though, that when you search for a game, it finds it on a safe site where they have an agreement with, most likely the Internet Archive. But there are a few others. Uh, they have checked with these sites, and they have permission to do this. So this system will not get canceled because of this functionality alone. At the very worst, if the Internet Archive, Atari Age, and some of the others, if they say, well, we just can't support your system anymore then the search function for the games goes out the window. That's it. You will still get your Dreamcade replay machine. It will come in the mail. But you would just need to find and supply the games and install them on their on your own. That's all. But I don't think it's going to. They have permission. You should be okay. So the project will not be canceled because of this included feature. So number three, Dreamcade replay won $100,000 on Thunderdome. So, there's a TV show that has two products compete for a prize that will help raise funds to get a product to market. This TV show is called Thunderdome. Yeah, uh, fund -er dome So, uh, when you say it all together, it just sounds like you're just saying Thunderdome over and over again. But it's not. Uh, hosted by Steve Harvey, it's kind of a clever name. The Dreamcade Replay won the $100,000 prize, and I heard a few complaints about it. One was that the day the show aired, the Kickstarter opened, implying that they were deceiving people about the amount of funds really needed. First, this is a simple marketing strategy. Once you see the TV show, some might be curious about what happened to the product, and they'll look it up. Why get featured on TV and then, what, wait a week or two before starting the crowdfunded campaign? Second, this helps the backers tremendously. It keeps the overall goal very low for us, and it ensures that Dream Arcades could make the product without relying on only one source of income. Many times you need to diversify when you're funding a project, because no single company wants to foot the entire bill. So, moving on. Number four, aren't they just using a bunch of open source emulators to make money? Well, the main intent doesn't seem to be just to make money. 
Head geek, Michael Ware, has said himself in the Drew Talks interview that the Kickstarter units might not be profitable for them. But that was fine. That was the reward for the people that helped with the Kickstarter. Because it helped them get the product finalized and completed for retail, where they could start making some money. Sure, it's open source programs, but they admit right from the start that the emulators being supported are not made by them. By supporting an emulator, it means that they're also adding to them. They're putting fixes in there. When you play arcade games, they will have a notification every time you add a quarter. A lot of emulators won't do that. The emulator known as Project 64 has been known to be difficult when selecting different resolutions. So, while they are using that emulator, they are also programming an add-on in order to cycle through the resolution options easier. When they find an emulator that works rather well overall, then they build on it, making any fixes or additions to make certain games run smoother. They're giving back to gamers by taking that open source emulator and making it work better than it was originally designed for. And you can always remove any added features they make to an emulator if you wish. So that ends the concerns section. This now is the features on the Dreamcade replay. So let's talk about what features will come on the replay itself. It's going to come with 100 licensed games pre-installed. Uh, licensing hasn't figured out what those games are going to be yet. That's fine. But you will have something to play with right away. You can add more games manually using the search feature. Add more games through another storage device. Stream them from the internet or stream them from your gaming rig in another room. Play arcade games, console games, pinball machines, casino games, slot machines, MP3s, movies, and even more. It comes with a simple-to-use interface, but you can add as many features and apps as you want, your favorite programs. If you feel so inclined, you can even add a CD-ROM drive. You can modify as little or as much as you want. Just plug it in and enjoy. Like I was talking before about the Retro Reload, this is also known as their search and downloadable games uh, thing. They have their own exclusive Retro Reload Google Safe search. That makes it really fast and easy for finding new games and putting them on your system. Family safe and virus free. When you search for a game, it looks for it on a few major sites like Atari Age, but the largest one is the Internet Archive, which has over 10,000 titles. There's also a retro streaming accelerator allowing you to stream games before you upload them, and it's as simple as clicking on a link. Here we are with the updates. One thing to remember with this product is that when you receive it, it's never actually finished. Dream Arcades will continue to, to provide updates and improve the software used on the Dreamcade. They do this with all their full-sized arcades, and since the Dreamcade uses the same software, you'll have access to the same professional updates used in their identical software on their stand-up arcade machines. You can add additional apps and features, and if something doesn't work right, then you can change it or start all over again. They are continuously working on adding new emulators and other features because it benefits all of their products. In one of their quotes, we aim to make the Dreamcade replay as user-friendly as possible, especially for those who are not computer savvy. This is how we have done it for years with our arcades, and that's what sets us apart from our competitors. You do have the option to opt out of these free upgrades, if you wish. You can make all the changes you want without any interference from the company you bought the device from. It's your device, and you can play your games the way you want. Dream Arcades can even remotely connect to your machine and fix it over the Internet. There is a warranty, a six-month parts and labor. Uh, they will also make it easy to make a backup of your system. The Dreamcade Replay will support nearly all types of controllers, wired or Bluetooth, even if you plug a real retro controller into a USB adapter. There are a few that have had problems connecting, but rest assured that if you can get a controller working with Windows 10, then it should work fine on the replay. And on to the community site. So as of update 16, Dream Arcades announced that they had started to build both a support and community website. Dream Arcades wants to get these websites online before the Dreamcade replay ships. This will give you a single place for them to get backer feedback and input on the product, as well as publicizing technical details for advanced users. Users will be able to share themes, games, even new emulators with each other. This information comes directly from Michael Ware and his update. The team wants you to help out each other, to upload cool themes and share emulators that's, that are starting to show promise. If you can't get something specific to load properly, 
if you can't get some aspect of the UI to work after an update, they want you to be able to get an answer from the community. For me, the community aspect is one of the biggest features I'm looking forward to. One guy could spend days making an NES theme or graphic to put in the background. He uploads it. Another guy takes the time and posts step-by-step -step instructions on how to edit this new graphic into your existing program of choice, like Emulation Station or RetroPie. You might find a longtime programmer finds an old Atari Jaguar emulator that's been outdated for over a decade, but he applies a few fixes, and because this kind of stuff is easy for him compared to what he does at his actual workplace, he uploads it, and everyone is blown away because the Jag CD works at full speed without any problems. Yeah, this description may be a little far-fetched, but it gives you an idea of the possibilities that this community site will bring. And all this is done without Dream Arcades needing to, to pay an employee for dozens of hours of work, letting them put the resources into something else. And then there's additional apps and services. So you can do more than just games. Because the replay runs on a full version of Windows 10 Home, it supports thousands of apps and programs. Not only will it be able to use the most popular apps like the Windows Store, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Video and YouTube, but a few other services as well. Steam is shown as being supported. If it's a game that meets the specs of the replay, then you can download and play them on the console itself. But I also know that it supports Steam in home streaming and is built into the menu. So even if you're playing a high-end game, you can run it from your gaming rig and stream it onto your TV or other device connected to the replay. It also shows support for GOG.com. That's right, good old games. But I don't know if you can also stream the games from your gaming rig for this app, but I'm really looking forward to this feature. I've got over, I think, like 32 games on GOG.com. I've been buying them during sales, hoping to be able to play most of them on my big screen TV from the replay itself. Cody is also listed. Cody supports most every video format under the sun, so you should have some fun with it. We also hit the goal for light gun support. That's right, the light gun will be after the initial console release because of it requiring additional hardware to work properly on modern TVs. They already designed working light gun support uh, for use in their upright arcade machines using modern day TV screens. So they have the technology. They can build it. It's just a matter of making a light bar or a box that will be recognized and work with the replay. They may end up doing this through a partner such as Arcade Guns. So what are the specs of the Dreamcade Replay versus a Pi 3? Well, the Replay is just a single board computer, which is pretty standard. So is the Raspberry Pi, by the way. Uh, it just means it's a complete computer built on a single circuit board. The Raspberry Pi 2 and 3 have a 1 gig of RAM. Uh, the Replay has 4 gigs of RAM. Uh, the CPU is a 1.2 gigahertz uh, for the Pi 3. Uh, overclocking it, I've watched people push it to 1.3 and 1.5 gigahertz. Uh, but this is going to run in turbo, but it's also going to be 2.4 gigahertz. So we get a pretty good boost there. When it comes to emulation, CPU power really helps. So running quad cores at over 2.2 gigahertz turbo means that the replay can not only handle a few of the more modern emulators, but also more recent titles like Street Fighter 4 and Counter-Strike. I heard that they actually even use Street Fighter 4 as a benchmark of sorts. Running the game maxes out most of the replay's capabilities. Don't quote me on that. I think that's what they were saying at one point. So, Dream Arcades is determined to get it working well with virtually no input lag, which will translate to most other games that aren't as technically demanding and help them run well along with it. So... I heard one commenter mention that they've confirmed that it's a, a 4K V1 mini PC for their processor. Um, yes, many of the demo units were the 4K V1, but the processor that will be in the final build is supposed to be the Z8550, unless there's a change. They've been testing out some different ones, but uh, before they sent out the test units, they compared the performance of the 4K with uh, the Z8550 on a ton of games, and it was pretty similar, uh, the same FPS and so on, if not slightly faster. So the Z8550 development boards were very expensive, but that's why they couldn't send them out to reviewers. Instead, they used a board that ran slightly slower than what they planned on using. 
uh, Michael Ware, uh, head game rustler, said, we want to under-promise and over-deliver. I hope that explains the test units and why they were a different uh, chip. But uh, in Michael Ware's own words, the final product will have the best CPU we can afford to put in it. Heat is a major concern, uh, they were saying, so they're working on running the CPU con consistently for four hours on turbo and then designing a case that will help with the airflow where needed. So it all sounds pretty good, huh? Well, this is the section where you can make this device your own. So Michael Ware, one of the creators and lead game motivator, I'm uh, not sure what that title means. I guess it means he sets a game down on the table and says, Do better! Uh, he, has, <laughs> he has said that he wants to put as many ports and options on the device as they can, but they've only released a list of the bare minimum for the campaign. Uh, USB 2.0 and at least one USB 3.0 and HDMI. He wants to have a micro SD slot and a regular SD slot, a plug-in for an SSD drive, a 20-pin accessory port for additional stuff that they want to add, but he's not sure. Bottom line is that they want to make this as easy as possible for you to grab this thing and start making it work for you without having to buy extra cables or a certain kind of SD card with a certain speed. The replay is an open system that allows you to expand and hack to your heart's content. They don't want you to feel limited while you game. The replay will support USB storage and micro SD cards. Because this is a full version of Windows 10 Home, if you know what you're doing, you can even just copy games over Wi-Fi as well. So, above all else, use your discretion and decide for yourself. So, do you still want to get one? Well, once they have the shipping date, they will do one more round of pre-orders. People will get a discounted price, but not as big as the original backers. But it might be a little cheaper than what they projected for the retail price to actually be. They can sign up to be notified at www.dreamcades.com slash hashtag five, F-I-V-E. I'll put it on screen or it'll be down. It'll be one of the first things in the description I'm going to put. Keep in mind, they will be adding more emulators. Limiting the Kickstarter campaign to 24 supported emulators is allowing them to get this thing finished. Some emulators haven't finished being fully tested, so they don't want to include it yet until they're working properly. Others haven't been tested at all, but they do know that they're out there. Others being looked at are Virtual Boy, Saturn, and Game Boy Advance that I know of. PlayStation 2 and Dreamcast have been tested and work. PS2 will be supported, but certain games might not run optimally. But that's not going to be in the first batch when it comes out. That emulator will be available eventually. Even if this device doesn't fully support an emulator that you really want to try, you can add any emulator by using the included Add Emulator Wizard. You can even add pinball emulators, even though they're not directly supported. At minimum, three emulators use cheat codes, NES, SNES, and Nintendo 64. Some of them use Game Genie, but they're not sure about the Game Shark stuff yet. All right, so that wraps it all up. I know it took a while, but December 2017 is the projected release window for the first set of units. I encourage you to check out the reviews once the final product starts shipping. I have never set up a Raspberry Pi machine, uh, but I can follow instructions and video guides just fine. I've built my own PC in the past, so I may not be one of the first ones to get my unit, but I feel I will be a good barometer on how easy or hard it is to set up the replay for the first time. I will try to get a review of the final product out as soon as I'm able, but please do a little research on your own to verify some of the things that I've said. Some quotes come from an interview, while several details I pulled right from the comments and update section on the Kickstarter page. I'll put links to some of the research I did in the description, so check them out and verify some of the things I said for yourself. Uh, you always got to do this. You got to verify things for yourself. Uh, and as always, let me know if I got something wrong in the comments. I don't work for Dream Arcades, and I was never paid anything for producing this video. I just really like the way this company is handling this product so far. So take the information I've given you and make your own decision when deciding to support this product. And that's it. So that closes our main topic. It's done. That's it. 
Uh, I do have still one update on the Retro Engine Sigma that I'm going to give, uh, that thing that I donated to. Uh, one thing to mention about the audio, and then I'll give you some links to other videos that I've done if you feel so inclined to watch. Hey, I did a, I put a lot of time into this thing, a lot of research. Uh, I was gathering stuff. I could have put something out as the Kickstarter was happening, but I kind of wanted to get the reception afterward. So I added a lot of stuff. I kept it around 30 minutes. Striker's perspective normally is not this long, but I wanted to cover this, and uh, I think it turned out pretty good. So, uh, first, let me know how the audio was in this episode in the comments. If you have a moment, tell me on a out of 10 scale. Uh, be honest. It shouldn't be as good as others like Rich at Review Tech USA. Uh, but I do think it's an improvement over my other videos. I was using a Turtle Beach headset, but I was recording right into Adobe Premiere Pro. Uh, that's kind of a quick way of recording the audio. I did still do some post alterations to the sound. It's okay, but please let me know. If I get a lot of 5 out of 10s or 6 out of 10s for a score, then maybe I should uh, record into Audacity first, normalize it, do a few more things, and then put it into Adobe Premiere. I just want to see how this kind of format works. And second, so, did I keep my order for the Retro Engine Sigma? To be fair, a rep on the phone was very nice. He answered questions, he gave me a free upgrade to the one gigabyte in RAM, and even gave me the option to cancel. He didn't have to. He was very professional. And uh, after five days, I decided to cancel my order. I know, I know, big shocker. At first, I stood behind my initial decision to make a pledge toward their product, and I decided to live with that decision. But that $100 could go toward buying a, a few decent USB controllers, better than the ones that they were going to give me anyway, that I could use on my soon-to-arrive replay. Yeah, and I also could use something better than uh, just a 32-gig SD card. I kind of wanted something bigger than that. That's what she said. But, uh, so yeah, so that money's going to go toward that. And finally... Thanks for watching, and in a few seconds, you'll see links to other videos I've done that you might like. Rage Quit 2 is your typical angry guy yells at a game, but there's some language in that, so plug the kid's ears before you see it. Those iconic Battlefield moments in Battlefield 1, that one turned out rather well, but there's some language in it too. It's a little bit quicker, and it gives you a guide into my kind of humor. There's also a guide for Stardew Valley, and some gameplay of Batman the Telltale game. Uh, warning for language in that one too, sorry, but hey, that's what it is. Uh, thanks again, I appreciate any time that you spend with me, and hey, click that like button if I deserve it, otherwise share. Thank you much.